This week on the RV Podcast... Advances in AI are making it easier to plan epic road trips. We'll explain in our interview of the week about a powerful trip planner aimed at RVers. It's finally a buyer's market for those who want to purchase a new RV. Dealers are anxious and more willing to offer big discounts as their lots remain filled with unsold inventory. On Mike and Jen's story time segment, at the end of the show, we'll tell you about the most embarrassing and the most costly mistake, mistake that we've ever made while RVing. Zion National Park plans to ban all large RVs from its popular eastern entrance starting in 2026 in hopes of unsnarling the park's often massive traffic jams. All this, plus the RV News of the Week and your questions, coming up in episode 501 of the RV Podcast. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Wendland, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. Well, this is now 501. All the hoopla over 500 is over. (sighs) Back to the grind. (laughs) Yeah, I guess we won't have any more hoopla till uh, 600. Yeah, um, but thank you. We had so many nice notes and calls and encouragement. And um, I was surprised how many of you say you have listened to all 500 that you started at episode one. Wow. And um, it was really encouraging for us uh, to uh, to hear from you. Hey, just a quick reminder that you can watch the video version of this podcast on our RV Lifestyle YouTube channel. That's at uh, youtube.com slash RV Lifestyle. And as the podcast is released, we're with 70 of our followers at our groove and gather with the temptations in the heart of Amish country and Shipshawana. Yep, Shipshawana, Indiana, and we call it groove and gather with the temptations because that will be kind of the highlight of our week in uh, Amish country. The, The temptations, most of them still original members, by the way of the Motown group uh, will be performing for uh, our gathering on uh, Thursday night. And we look forward to uh, telling you all about that, but that's going to be a lot of fun. But that comes on the heels of a very busy week that we spent last week. Yeah, last week uh, we were reviewing three small class A RVs. Yeah, we'll have a complete video uh, on those, what we think of it. Uh, and we'll try and do like we did with our class B reviews. We're going to look at that small A segment and we hope to have those uh, pretty quick. Let's see. Also this past week we got Bo microchipped and another, an unnecessary but required rabies vaccine. Uh, All that was necessary to fill out the proper forms to qualify for these. We've been telling you about it now for a couple, three weeks. These confusing controversial and much criticized new guidelines required by the CDC to bring a dog back to the U.S. if you visit another country with your pet, even Canada. So uh, I'm sure we'll be telling you much more about that. I've heard from so many people who are very upset with this, people who have canceled long-planned RV vacations to Canada, people complaining that the forms they need are not available, Vets complaining that they haven't heard a thing about this, and it takes effect August 1st. And as I tell everybody, uh, it makes no sense at all, but we are dealing with the government, and that should go without saying. All right, um, we will come back after this quick break with the social media buzz. Lots of things on your mind this past week, and Wendy Boyer will report all about that when we return. After countless nights on the road, we have finally found the ultimate comfort solution for our home away from home, our RV mattress from rvmattress.com slash RV lifestyle. Now, let me tell you, this is a game changer. Everybody knows that the stock mattresses that come in an RV are not great. And whether you are a weekend warrior or a full timer, you deserve better sleep. RVmattress.com has 22 plus size options, five height options, and three firmness options, so you are bound to find something that fits. Jennifer and I got the signature hybrid mattress in Queen with the cooling cover, and we love it. It truly has us sleeping just as good in the RV as our house. In fact, so good, 
we actually got another RV mattress for our sticks and bricks house. Now swapping out the uncomfortable old stock mattress for our new RV mattress was easy. It shipped from Arizona for free in a box. We brought it into the RV and never looked back. This RV mattress is plush comfort, the best sleep we've ever had in an RV. Every night feels like a luxury retreat, and we highly recommend upgrading your mattress at rvmattress.com. Trust us, you will not regret it. And if you use the promo code RVLIFESTYLE, you'll get a really nice discount. Again, go to rvmattress.com slash RVLIFESTYLE. Welcome back, everybody. Time for the social media buzz. And now Wendy is going to tell us about the hot issues most talked about this past week on social media and our RV Lifestyle Community Group. Hi, everybody. Over in our RV Lifestyle Community's travel trips and tour space, Cindy was recently looking for campground suggestions for Michigan's Upper Peninsula anywhere between Porcupine Mountains in Sault Ste. Marie. And she got some great tips I'd love to share with you. Lori recommended Indian Lake RV Resort and Campground and Indian Lake Campground. They're both in Manistique. She said they're very clean, friendly owners, beautiful location. And she also shared her favorite boondocking spot in the world is in the Upper Peninsula's East Lake Hiawatha National Forest. Now, Carrie, she recommended the Un Osborne Campground in Sault Ste. Marie. She had recently stayed there. It's right on the lake. Those big ships come in, and she said it was absolutely sensational. And Melissa, she really liked Woodland Park Campground in Grand Marais. She got a spot there last year overlooking Lake Superior. Sounds like gorgeous views. And it's a great place to find Uper light rocks, which um, you need kind of a black light to find, but apparently they sell them in town. So I had to look up what are Uper light rocks. It, very interesting. They have this fluorescent glow to them, kind of an orange color. Very cool. You need to check that out. Also in our community, um, we had another question. This one in the general RV and camping space from Annette. And she needed help finding an app or some tool to help her find fuel pumps that have DEF, that's diesel exhaust fluid at the pump. Sounds like they made a recent trip. They stopped at three different gas stations. They were truck stops. So she thought for sure they'd have it at the pump and they didn't. And she didn't want to repeat the waste of time and money. Um, and she got some great tips. Some people like Michael said, you just need to stop at the right gas stations uh, for this. And he recommended TA Petro, Pilot Flying J and Loves. Um, others like Richard suggested using an app called Yara, which uses GPS to help you find the pumps that have this um, in real time by using GPS. And it sounds like Mark and Brenda also use an app to help them. Um, they use a truck and travel app. So good tips there. And then meanwhile, over in our Facebook group, we had a post from Kara and she wrote, one thing I wasn't warned about when we decided to go full time were the mayflies. And she said that she had the third or fourth swarm of them hit her rig in the last couple months and she shared a picture and you wouldn't believe what this picture looked like. We're talking her beautiful Keystone, Montana, in the back by the ladder, just splattered with dead mayflies. There were so many dead bugs on this. I thought it looked like it had been sprayed with mud, real heavy mud. Um, it was stunning, and I wasn't the only one who was surprised by this. Lots of comments, uh, like Kim's who said, I have never seen anything like this before. Um, and then there were also many others who had firsthand experience with these mayflies and wrote things like, been there, done that. Now, Kara was camping in Mississippi when this happened, but it sounds like these mayflies are sprouting all over the place right now in different parts of the country. People were chiming in where they were and the bugs they were experiencing. And John, he shared a picture of his rig splattered with these things last June when he was camping way up in Lake uh, by Lake Erie. So um, more than 430 comments about mayflies. And it uh, sounds like if you get hit with them, make sure you get them off your rig right away because they can damage the paint and finish. But that's it for me. I'm Wendy Boyer, and I'll see you next time over in the RV Lifestyle Community or Facebook group. Yeah, those mayflies, uh, we have encountered them many times ourselves. They just, we used to call them fish flies. Mm -hmm. And I even saw some last week when we were testing out those small Class A's. We stayed at a Michigan State Park over in uh, southeastern Michigan, and uh, it was um, the Proud Lake Recreation Area, and we had some fish flies on those little Class A's that we were testing. So. There's so much to be learned from what Wendy shares, and 
it's so simple when you don't know where to camp and you put it out there i'm going to be in an area and i don't know where to camp and other people love to tell you where they camped and make recommendations of places and i saw some places that we have camped because this was a michigan question and another place i think that we need to check out and go yeah. to um if you look this we have two social media sites that we talk about one of them is on facebook our rv lifestyle group there it has 401,000 members uh, as of today, probably 402,000 tomorrow. But, you know, Facebook can get kind of messy and ugly and nasty. Um, even though we have a great team of moderators, as a result of all that growing, I think, growing na nastiness that you see on Facebook as a whole, we kind of started a new uh, group, a new community off of Facebook. So it's not subject to all those weird algorithms, nor is it being plagued by all the nastiness that you see on Facebook. So that is the RV Lifestyle community, and you find it at community.rvlifestyle.com. We invite you to come check it out. Join it. It's, join it. it's free. It is a really interesting group uh, of, of people who are there to help, encourage, make friends, build relationships, build community which is what the RV Lifestyle is all about. Again, it's community.rvlifestyle.com. Go on over there. You can send me an instant chat when you do, and I'll see that you joined, and I'd love to say hi to you. All right, when we come back, an RV conversation about artificial intelligence and how you can use AI to plan truly an epic road trip. That's coming up right after this. Jennifer and I took a trip to Las Vegas and Arizona to look at Windmill Acres, a brand new RV property being offered by Western Land and Ranches. They're selling off one and two acre parcels, starting at only $14,900. Now these are big. An acre is the size of a football field. The properties are on a plateau with big valley views and the location is amazing, next to Lake Mead National Recreation Area. We had a blast. There are so many places to explore near the property. The Grand Canyon. We took a boat ride on the Colorado River below Hoover Dam. Boulder City was a fun little town. That's uh, right off Route 66. And of course, we had to enjoy some nightlife in Las Vegas. It's a lifetime supply of fun things to do when you own a camp at Windmill Acres. The properties are now available. This is 100% ownership, so there's no reservations needed when you want to hang out. Time limits or crowded parks that you have to go through. You can share your property, you can rent it, it's whatever you want to do. For more information, visit ArizonaRanchSales.com or call 822-232-LAND. Welcome back. It's time now for the RV Conversation of the Week. And one question we see often on our social media platforms is, why is it so hard to plan an RV trip? Can't I find someone to just plan it for me? And today we'd like to talk to you about a great tool that greatly simplifies trip planning and even learns from your likes and your dislikes, remembering everything from the type of campgrounds you prefer the amount you like to drive a day, the size of your rig, things you like to see and do, and much more. Our guest is Scott Langle, the uh, chairman and CEO of Adventure Genie, an app that helps you plan the perfect RV trip using AI. We had Scott on our program when Adventure Genie was just launching more than a year ago, and we've been watching this startup ever since and thought we'd bring Scott back to catch up on all things Adventure Genie. Welcome back to the show, Scott. Great to be back here again. So for those who may have missed the first time you were on the podcast, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, your background and how you came up with this whole idea for Adventure Genie. So after about 35 years in the tech industry, most recently with Microsoft as a CTO in one of their divisions, I retired in 2017, and with my wife, Lisa, we started to see a little bit more of the world to explore the sights and sounds and smells and cultures from the world around us. That was our plan. Our plan was working quite well for a couple of years until we all know what happened with the pandemic. 
which meant no more planes, trains, and even automobiles were a little bit weird. And after several years, friends of ours who had been big in the RV industry had been pestering us to go RVing with them. It honestly was never a desire for us. So we hadn't been camping or RVing our entire life, but we were pandemic babies. We, we went out, we went on a trip with them to Nashville. It was one of the best trips we ever had in our lives. We fell in love with the lifestyle. We ordered and bought a, a new RV from up in Forest City, Iowa. So you might know who that is. Picked it up about six months later and drove it back home to South Carolina where we live. We did some local travels. It was easy. And then my wife, Lisa, had this brainstorm to go on a six-week trip to the national parks of the Southwest. And that's when it became way more complicated. And we learned how hard it was to plan a compelling journey across the U.S., finding places to go, things to see, places to stay, thing, and things to do. And that, of course, was the birth of Adventure Genie. Describe how it works, and then we'll catch up on what has changed in the last year, and particularly how AI is, uh, is making things so much easier. And, uh, and I think you can kind of help us out, but start with how it works. Sure, Mike. So... What we found was the way that most people were planning their RV trips, and we found it through the, the forums and the groups and the chats and material from folks like yourself, was that people go through three phases. First, they shape their trip, going from point A to point B. For us, we live in South Carolina, so often we would say we're going from Bluffton to Asheville to Nashville, and then let's say to Yellowstone or or out to Arches National Park. And we needed help in finding the spots along the way that were a good driving distance, that had a good concentration of campgrounds that were a good fit for us. So that's shaping your trip. And we actually give our users several ways to do it, ranging from going from point A to point B to point C, to just throwing out an open-ended query that says, I'd like to take a trip from Virginia Beach down to Key West and stop at all the beach towns along the way. So that's shaping your trip. Number two is we give you through AI great recommendations on campgrounds that are a good fit for let's say Mike and Jennifer. And we will we will give you like top three picks of campgrounds because we know what you like in a campground, what you don't care about in a campground, and things you absolutely want to avoid in a campground. So for each campground that we make a recommendation for you, we'll give an AI-generated summary based on this technology we call sentiment analysis. So it's the overlying sentiment that we're learning, our software is learning about each campground that we're, that we're learning about, and we'll give it a score, and most importantly, will give it a percent likelihood that it will be a good match for you. So you might look at a rating of a campground of 79, say that's pretty good, but with a 93% certainty, we will predict that, it's, that you are going to like this campground, Mike. And finally, the third phase of the trip planning is things to do, because we know that you like to go hiking and biking and walk your dogs and we will make specific recommendations at your destination and along the way for things for you to do. So we do all that research for you. We make the recommendations for you. We put it into a trip planner with an itinerary with dates and everything else. So we do the hard work and then let you have fun on your trip. So talk about the AI part of this. Now, you've been uh, well over a year into this. How far has AI come in terms of helping our viewers in that year's period? And then based on that, where are we going to be in another year? Yeah. And it's kind of funny because when we started developing Adventure Genie, AI was just starting to pick up a little bit in the mainstream. We know that it's been around for decades, literally since like the 1950s and 1960s. And always it's been like just within our grasp. It's AI is coming. AI is coming. And there's actually a fair amount of fear about what is AI? Is it going to take over our world? And what we found over the past couple of years is that AI is good and cool and helpful and makes recommendations and does the work for you and kind of acts as your co-pilot sitting alongside you making recommendations. 
it's with the advent of things like like Bing Chat and OpenAI's Chat GPT, the end user is able to do very simple queries in these in these uh, AI conversational AI systems, but it doesn't put it into a context of anything for you. We take all of that and put it into a context of a trip, of a of an adventure, of an itinerary. So all the things that you could, it's still not easy to use using Chat GPT. But with, with our AI system, levering the best of the best AI models out there, we pull it all together, put it into a single system. There's really two ways we look at it. One is through, they call it generative AI. So create me a trip that looks like this. That's generative AI. The next one is conversational AI, and that's where it's going in Adventure Genie. And we're actually releasing, we're previewing some software next week at the time of this taping that will allow you to say, oh, thank you for creating that great tip trip. Now add a stop in Amarillo, Texas, or find me a great campground in the Keys. And you just do it completely in English language without having to point and click and find your menu items and do all that. So that's where we're heading with it. We currently cover the lower 48 very well. We also include Alaska. And of course, to get from the lower 48 to Alaska back, you have to go through Canada. So we do the routing through Canada and we have baseline campgrounds in Canada, but um, admittedly our campground database in Canada is still up and coming. We actually don't even uh, really announce or advertise, I should say, that we support Canada, but the reality is that we do. So whatever you see today with the richness and robustness of what we're doing in the lower 48 and Alaska, you will see it coming really soon in Canada as well. Scott, we are impressed with what you have. Um, tell us a little bit about the last year. You've won a couple of awards. Uh, I'm hearing more and more people talking about how handy and how easy it is to operate. Uh, yeah, over the past year, we've continued to evolve the product every three weeks. Literally, Mike, every three weeks, we're releasing new software. We're not sitting idly by. We're constantly evolving our algorithms and adding new features like the conversational personal genie, we call it, that we'll be releasing shortly. Um, the other big thing that we're pretty proud of is we've established a couple of key partnerships in the industry. And what it has allowed us to do is to become the first and only adventure travel planner targeted at the RVers that lets you go from renting an RV through our partnership with RV Share to planning the trip to booking a site with immediate availability, checking on immediate availability with our partner Spot Tonight. So with these two big partnerships that we now have directly integrated in our software, you can go from renting to planning to booking fully end to end. We've had a couple of great uh, 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 accolades recently. Honestly, over the past year, every month, if not more frequently, someone is writing about us and we're not going to them. They're just writing articles about us. Go RVing rated us as one of the top 11 trip planning apps for the RVer a couple of months ago. And there's a publication known as Travel AI Hub they rated us one of the top four AI-based trip planners in the world, not just for RVers, one of the top four AI-based trip planners in the world. And we've been written up in uh, Business Insider and Forbes and CNBC. So yeah, we're uh, it's been an active year, really, really exciting, and we have great plans. Ahead. Tell people uh, if they're interested how can they get a, get more information about this, see how it works, uh, the different plans that you have? Uh, to subscribe to Adventure Genie or just to play around with it, go to AdventureGenie.com. And we have a basic free plan that lets you do a lot of things, including getting full access to our, our campground database, some curated trips, pre-planned trips that we have for you. And it lets you play around with a little bit of all of the AI capabilities. That's absolutely free. And our professional plan, which uh, you can subscribe to at $9.99 a month or $49.99 a year, will give you complete full access to the entire suite of applications, full AI, end-to-end -end trip planning, Oh, and we have a 30-day free trial on that one, too. 
it's amazing to watch how technology can take those different stressors that affect us all as we're trying to get from point A to point B. And you guys have done a great job. Um, thanks for update. And we'll probably check back with you on a regular basis as we watch uh, everything get better. Thanks a lot, Mike. Great chatting with you again and uh, be safe out there on the road. Well, I'm a big fan of Adventure Genie and it's it's so interesting to see how they have uh, just narrowed it down and every time you use it, uh, it, it tailors its uh, this, this results it gives you to what you have indicated before, your preferences. I think we're going to use it to plan our trip uh, out to the Maritimes uh, later on, and then our trip back, we'll, we'll use it as well. So it should be pretty good. All right, when we come back, the RV News of the Week. Stay with us. Jennifer and I bought some land near Nashville, Tennessee a while back. We got tired of crowded, expensive campgrounds and worrying about reservations. Tennessee is a gorgeous state with friendly people, and it has been such a pleasure. The same developer has some new property near us close to the Natchez Trace and Buffalo River called The Reserve at High Forest. Big properties, five to 41 acres. You can build a house, a cabin, or RV year round. Prices start at only $89,900. Your property, your way, 100% ownership. The scenery in this part of Tennessee is breathtaking and the property is gorgeous, garden, landscape, bring your pets, build what you want. There's high-speed fiber optic internet and it is so private. A great place to make your home base ready whenever you want it. Five to 41 acre properties from $89,900. There's even great financing. Check out the site and a video tour at rvlands.net. That's rvlands.net. All right, time now for the news of the week. And this summer is the best time in a long time to buy an RV, says the Wall Street Journal, noting high interest rates and excessive inventory, both new and used. The newspaper says consumers have way more negotiating power than they've had in almost a decade. The story cited Thor Industries, the world's largest RV manufacturer, Thor's fiscal third quarter sales were down by 40%, and earnings per share were down by two-thirds. We've seen uh, it play out as we travel and visit RV dealerships. Their lots are filled with unsold 2024 models, and the 2025s are in a few months, so there's a lot of deal-making going on. The same holds true for those looking to buy a used vehicle. The Wall Street Journal noted that the number of used units listed for sale on RVTrader.com is more than twice as high as during the period of peak demand during the COVID boom a couple of years ago. Yeah, we were at some dealerships last week and um, we were just asking you know, what the MSRP is and we were just surprised what kind of deals they were offering. I mean, it was just a couple of years ago during COVID that RV dealers were charging MSRP plus in some cases. I don't ever agree with that, but that's what they were doing. And uh, now the the pricing, the deals were pretty pretty amazing. So it's also pretty amazing. How about this? There's some good news because gas and diesel prices are down again. I paid three dollars and twenty six cents a gallon for diesel today, filling up, uh, and uh, the gas price is now at about 348. So diesel's actually now again cheaper than gas. It hadn't been that way for the last several years. But gas at 348, that is down 8 cents from what it was the week before. And it's the largest weekly drop of the year. Uh, diesel prices around the country are pretty much the same as gas or often cheaper. Um, the experts are predicting this is going to get even better with many states seeing unleaded regular gas they think going for under three dollars a gallon in just a, a few weeks why well what year is this it's 2024 a presidential election year and high gas prices are the bed and butter issue with a lot of voters and there's enough uh, reasons out there in our uh, culture these days to be disgruntled, things going wrong. 
So you can be sure that elected officials are putting a lot of pressure on everybody they can, oil producers, oil companies, the states, you know, who tax gasoline, to keep fuel prices down. Now you think I'm being too cynical. I bet you do. Well, withhold your judgment. Ask me that back in uh, after November. Come back after those elections because I will bet you anything the prices are going to go right back up then. Now I know seasonal blends do have some effect on pricing. But politics, believe me, as a journalist of over 40 years experience, politics has an even bigger uh, uh, role to play in the pricing. So the bottom line is we can enjoy those lower fuel prices this summer, and I'm not going to complain. And this is something interesting. If you're planning on going to Zion National Park and you got a bit of a long RV, listen up. Zion National Park has you know, it's long been plagued by too many vehicles, massive traffic jams, and not nearly enough parking. They've tried lots of things, timed entry, permits, more buses. Now they have a new idea. Don't let RVs in. Starting in 2026, Zion will no longer permit large vehicles like campers and buses to travel through the east entrance of the park. Vehicles taller than 11 feet and 4 inches and wider than 7 feet and uh, 10 inches will have to travel around the park to the west entrance, adding up to an hour of transit time. Any vehicle longer than 35 feet and 9 inches will also be forced to drive around. The new plan is designed to make the road safer, especially through the Zion Mount Carmel Tunnel. That is a narrow tunnel. Yeah, it really is. That yeah. tunnel was des uh, designed more than a hundred years ago, and at that, at the time that it was developed, vehicles were much smaller than they are today, allowing them to safely make passage. So through time, vehicle sizes have grown to be incompatible with the tunnel size. And park officials say those tunnel escorts happen about 50 times per day and create massive traffic jams. By keeping big RVs out of there, park officials are hoping the congestion will ease. Yeah, that is um, going to be interesting. Now, Zion probably is the most congested of all of our national parks just because of the way it's laid out and the, and the terrain. But I bet this is an idea that you're going to see in other places because uh, some, I mean, some of those RVs, those big Class A diesel pushers are pulling, you know, cars behind them. They're bigger than semi trucks, you know. So uh, I bet this this goes on elsewhere. Don't you think? I, I, it's going to catch on. All right. Let me come back. A couple of your RV questions. Stay with us. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And Battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have, and they'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back. Time now for the RV questions of the week. And uh, we want to remind you that we do love getting your questions. We love your comments. Anything you heard on the podcast today that you want to comment on or question, send them to us at Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. That's our, our personal email. And uh, if you send us a question or comment, chances are uh, we'll answer it right here on the podcast. All right, this uh, first question is for you, my dear. Okay. Uh, it sure isn't for me. And let me just uh, read this thing. It says, uh, we're on a long trip west, and we stopped for some photos along the way, and I was shocked how bad I looked. Granted, showers have been a couple of days apart, and sleep has not been the best. Traveling can be hard, she says. But I look terrible in the photos with my family. 
how does Jennifer stay looking so good all the time? Uh, I know your travel schedule is even more hectic. So beauty tip time, Jennifer. How do I look good and fresh and reasonably attractive when the road is taking its toll on me? Please share your secrets and this from Darcy. I never figured I'd be asked a question like this and this just makes me chuckle. Well, what I can say is that a good night's sleep is so important. I mean, our sleeping in a different van every night. It was just a couple like, of weeks ago, oh, yeah. It, it, you just don't get the sleep that you need. And uh, sleep is very important. Don't feel wicked if you sleep in or you need your sleep. You need sleep. And uh, you, you get puffy when you don't get that right amount of sleep. And the terrible enemy is eating out. You know, you're starving to death and you grab some fast food or even food at just about every restaurant out there there's too much salt in the food and salt makes you retain fluid and that's not good for you but um if you're really desperate uh put on a hat you know if if because if you're really boondocking and you can't plug in your hair dryer to maybe get your hair a little moist and then you know use the hair dryer to try to make it look fresher or some product to make like my hair is kind of naturally wavy and kind of a mess and i just put product in it and make it more you of a mess. Of like this. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of mess it up and it's supposed to look this way. This is this is the look. So uh, hair product, hats, eyes, sunglasses, if possible, put on some sunglasses or maybe some makeup. And uh, a product that was recommended to me many years ago, which I really like, it's Lancome. And it's a night product that you put on to just make your face better and i try to use that every night i mean the lack of estrogen as you age takes its toll upon a woman so and i leave the estrogen in your camp whatever you want to do i had an OBGYN once in uh, one of my classes tell me whatever you do uh take a little estrogen but you know that's a whole can of worms i don't want to open so uh the, the sunglasses the hat the product Try not to try to make wise choices when you eat out, even though I will say, don't put any extra salt on this, that or whatever that I'm ordering. Man, I eat out, you know, the next day, my if I'm home and I weigh myself, my weight's up a pound or two because I've eaten out. They just uh, what they do to our food and try to make healthy choices. But lack of sleep doesn't uh, doesn't driving for in a car a long time. Doesn't that? And oh, yeah. fluid retention because I notice you know like my ankles and my even like my wing will get really tight mm -hmm. when I've been driving and you know, kind of like puff up so yeah much. and like trying yeah. to get you to stop and run around the car a couple times to get some exercise you know you I'm like that when I when I'm driving I don't want to stop because all those cars I passed are going to pass me and then I got to pass them again so um we got to get out there and we got to move around and why I liked a B or a C or I guess an A, motorhome, was you can get up and walk back and forth if the driver is crazy and won't stop. But uh, moving around. So I don't be so hard on yourself. And also to make yourself feel fresh, if you were in the hospital, they have different wipes that they use to freshen you up a bit. So um, get some of those and freshen yourself up a bit so that you feel more perky. I can honestly say... This is a question that I absolutely know nothing about. So, <laughs> well, I think that uh, I like I can't sleep if my feet are clean. <laughs> That's crazy. So I, I have to have clean feet to sleep. But now we're talking about taking pictures. So um, light, some light is horrible and it doesn't help at all. In fact, we had somebody come up to both of us we were at an rv show and they said you look better in person than on camera <laughs> and i said, you know because i'm always saying to mike we got to be careful with the light so too much light direct light on you you know you want it somewhat back or off the line but because some light can really make you look terrible but i think we're talking about messy hair and circles under the eyes and a puffiness all right darcy i hope that helps you uh, become as beautiful as you so are, are we going to add side tips every week from jennifer no more <laughs> tips from jennifer right? i tuned out about halfway in the but, okay um all right next question this one i can get a little bit 
most of the 110 outlets in our trailer are not working. We're plugged into shore power. None of the breakers or fuses are blown. What do I check? Okay. That comes from Jack, by the way. And um, Jack, the best thing is to go through your trailer and look for an outlet um, that either has a little sticker or is somehow designated as a GFCI protected outlet. That stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupt. And it's required uh, on plugs or receptacles, you know, electrical receptacles in a, that's in a location where yeah, an outlet could be exposed to water, like a sink or a faucet, um, or outside uh, the trailer, even sometimes in the storage bin. Uh, and what has probably happened in your case is one of those GFCI outlets have tripped. And um, not all of them have a reset button because they're tied all together on the same general circuit. So if one of them uh, up the train kind of goes out and the GFCI uh, resets, uh, they're all dead. So you want to look for one that has a little reset button. And most of them, if it's not working, will have a little light with it. Uh, and usually a little gold light or a red light that indicates it's not working right. Uh, if it has a green light, that usually means it's good. But not all of them have a light, but they all have a little button. It's usually a little square button, and you can just push it in with the ballpoint pen or the, your fingertip. Try resetting that. Uh, I am betting that you will find that most of the GFCI outlets uh, have a bunch of other outlets connected to them in your case and you find the one that needs to be reset and they'll all work. So click the button. Uh, Why did it trip? Uh, it, something could have bumped it. Uh, two, I have one, for example, in the um, pass-through storage of our Montana. And every now and then something will come across and it'll just, it'll just hit it just right. You know, if I have it loaded with things floating around in there, which I shouldn't do, but uh, it's happened. Um, but a lot of things could have caused it. Uh, maybe too many appliances were plugged into the outlet. Maybe you're running the air conditioner and somebody uses a hair dryer. Um, it could have sensed moisture. Uh, sometimes um, it, it's even just as a matter of too much humidity and it can sense too much moisture. Um, if it does keep tripping all the time, then you better have it checked by an electrician. But I'm betting if you just hit that little button, that's all that it is. That was a lot easier than the beauty question. <laughs> I, I made it too long. No, I no. went off on bunny trails like <laughs> I always do. I'm sure they'll like it. All right, this is our new feature that we have had a lot of great feedback with. I hope we don't run out of stories, but story time. We need a little music. Story time with Mike and Jen. We need a little dream time. All right, so this is probably our most uh, embarrassing and costly mistake and let me just say right off the bat i own it okay uh, uh, because i did not listen to you when you said let me get out and help you park yes and uh mike was uh backing into a parking spot well let's set the stage because okay, it, it was not just any parking spot oh yeah we were in tampa florida uh at the florida rv super show it was a brand new rig this was our first long distance trip in a fifth wheel. Backing up parking too, wasn't it? Um, I think I backed up, you know, a little bit here and there. But this was a, this was a tough one. All the rigs were very close. It was narrow. The guy just sort of abandoned me that drove me into it. So um, I, I looked and we were camped with all the other um, media, RV, YouTube influencers. And we know most of them. And they're all watching. <laughs> They were all watching. I, I doubt they were all watching. They were watching, trust me. They're all sitting there going, okay, we're going to watch this. So I'm very confident. Well, the next time you parked at a group like that, they were all watching. They wanted to know what you're going to do to entertain them. But anyway, uh, you said, let me get out and help you. And why I said I can do this, I have no idea. Because that's kind of the way, the kind of guy you are. I can do this. <laughs> I thought I could. It's good to have confidence. So, well, <laughs> in this, Better so, than so I started, I started to back in and I got it somewhat regular. I brought it out, you know, you, and it was really tight. And obviously I'm really cranking it and I'm cranking it so hard that we hear this massive crack. 
We did. And Bo was on my lap. He was in, sitting in second, the back seat when this happened. But in a second, that dog could jump. The crack was the front uh, corner of the fifth wheel, which was cranked on such an angle to our car that it smashed out our entire rear window. Glass everywhere. Just exploded. And fortunately, it's that safety glass, so it's, it wasn't bad. Nobody got cut. But how Bo, a 70-pound dog, could leap from the back of that pickup truck onto your lap, I don't know. But uh, he did. I was worried we'd never get him back in that truck. And, of course, word spread through the campground what I had done. I'm going to sell popcorn the next time we have to uh, park someplace. Yeah, you probably could. Take some chairs out. Uh, and everybody was great. They all came and they, they offered us their shop vacs, but I felt so embarrassed. And, you know, the truth was I did not listen to my wife. So the lesson is, listen to your wife, but the lesson is get help when you're backing up. And um, we now do that. And there's a couple of ways you can do it with walkie-talkies. We have those. You can do it with cell phones. You know, I pref we prefer doing it with just hand signals. Stop. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of going, you know, it's, now we have signals, you know, this way, this way. Instead of going. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. All right, that is our story, Karen. That's our most about. What's your most embarrassing and costly mistake? I can't be the only one who does stupid things out there. Well, somebody came up and said they popped their window, too, in their, their truck. Yeah, they did. No, maybe they're just trying to make me feel good, but... All right, that's the story of the week. That's the end of the podcast. I still am embarrassed telling that one. <laughs> But, you know, they say that therapy is good in admitting your mistakes. So hopefully that won't happen again. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'd love to hear from you. Use our personal email to reach us with your questions or your comments. It's Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy trails.